This is the Assembly Bandit, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up Assembly Studio 8X so that you can program um, apps and programs for the TI-84 Plus C calculator. The first thing you're going to want to do is download all the links that are in the About section on the video. And the TI-84 PCSC.include file, you're going to have to copy and paste it into a text file and just rename it. Open up uh, assemblystudio.zip and run the um, installer for it. Then run the TI Connect installer. After that's done, you'll have your Assembly Studio 8X folder and you can open up Assembly Studio 8X plugins.rare and just drag in AppFair 84 pcsedll and assem 84 pcsedll These two files will, the AppFair will create an AppFair for you and the assembly 84 pcsc file will create a 84 plus c file. Next, open up idefiles.rare and drag in tasm80.tab. What that is is a list of all the Z80 instructions, the mnemonics, and the opcodes. Um, this version right here fixes out D or out I, I think, and it also adds in a bunch of undocumented opcodes. Next, you're going to want to open templates and rename these to just prefix them with an X. What these are are the original 83 plus templates, but since you want to program for the 84 plus C, you're going to want these new ones in there. So just drag those over. Get that out of the way. Um, the tasm80.cct file. This is the instruction count, or not the instruction count, but the, the execution count for each instruction. You can open up that and modify it if you want. If you find an error or something, let me know. Um, so I can change mine in here. Um, also let me know if you add in the undocumented opcodes because they're not present right now. I haven't changed that yet. So run Assembly Studio 8X. First go to Tools, Options, select your colors to um, um, whatever you want really. I keep mine at blue, red, green, and orange and then set up some external tools if you want such as notepad or calculator or a base converter if you need it then click OK now to start a new program project new project and then go to TI-83 plus assembly program and type in the name of your program I'm just gonna call this one hello by default it's going to build one release build but you can click this checkbox if you want um, both a debug and a release build. I usually just keep it as one uh, release build. Then click OK. This right here is the template um, ready that's already set up for you. It automatically includes the ti 84 pcseinclude file. Right up here is some macro definitions for bcall and bjump which are used for the ROM routines. Now, in my uh, programs and stuff, I like to keep a copy of the ports at the top of the page. That way I can quickly reference them and look at the different values that I need to set to, um, to achieve the functions that I want. Down here, .org, user mem. That basically sets up um, the symbol table for you. So it's, you know, get your labels right, located right and stuff. So your first um, label is going to be starting off at user mem if you create one, or your first instruction is going to be at user mem. Now this is going to be a simple program. First I'm going to put in one label, and then I'm going to type in return. The simplest program you can have, all it does is 
returns. As soon as you call it, it just jumps right back. Um, C9, nice and easy. Down here, dot ends. It's not required, but what it does allow you to do is copy like little routines and instructions and stuff down here, and they won't be built into the file. So that right there won't even be uh, it won't even be seen whenever it builds. Before you build your program, you're going to want to go to Project, Settings, Build Steps, and then you can see right here hello.sm gets built into um, an 83 plus file using the assembly83p.dll. You want to edit that and change it to t84 plus c dot uh, 8cp file. Click OK and then OK again. And now if you build it, you should see down here zero errors, zero warnings. Um, you can open it up. Whoops. And you can see right here you've you've got your dot eight cp file. This file um dot eight cp it's not really an official extension. I just use it to distinguish between eighty four plus and 84 plus C files. Um, the 84 plus files are .8xp. Um, the 8cp file just it's no icon, but you can still drag it to TI Connect and send it to your calculator. So first, I'm gonna show you some bugs in here. Assembly Studio 8X is not perfect. Um, it just has three bugs that I know of. One is this little control pane, uh, output pane down here. If you pull it all the way down, it's impossible to pull it back up. There is a way, well, there, there's actually two ways. You can reinstall it, or you can go to the registry edit and edit your registry, find the key for Assembly Studio 8X, and change the value for the output pane. Um, but it is a pain to do. If you ever want it gone, just click on this little toolbar button up here. Next, there's the sprite bug. If you click on edit, insert sprite, click OK. As you can see, you can't scroll all the way down. This bar doesn't go anywhere. It just stops right there. So as soon as you insert a sprite, click on this little guy right here save sprite, close, and now you can scroll down to as far as uh, your page goes. So I'm going to delete that out of there. And now the last bug that I know of is the code counter. The first time you use the code counter, it's probably going to fail. At least that's what I've noticed. Um, after you use it a lot, it works good. Maybe after like the first time you use it, it probably works pretty good. Definitely always click save all before you use the code counter. So I can highlight this instruction, return, click on the code counter, and as you can see, one instruction, one byte, ten cycles. That's correct. Now the code counter likes to read comments. So if I put a comment in here and then I highlight it again, you can see zero instructions, zero bytes, zero cycles. Um, gets annoying, but if you ever want to know how many bytes are in your program, for sh uh, for sure, click on assembly statistics, and then you can see code size one byte. It'll also tell you the data uh, data size and then the total size. Um, just one byte though, for return. In here, you can also click symbol table, and you can see all the symbols that are included into your program since this added the TI-84 plus C, uh, PCSE dot include file it includes all those if you scroll down you can see USB in it 1, 2, and 3 right here it also includes these uh, equates over here that I have at the top um, if you want to just search labels that are in your program click that and then you can see hello right there starts at user mem which is a60b
A useful feature of uh, Assembly Studio 8X is this little splitter bar. So you can be reviewing uh, code and stuff up here while you're modifying code down here. Um, copy and pasting stuff, whatever you need to do. Makes it a lot easier. If you click on assembly and then go to hex listing, what it's going to do is is it's going to build you a text file of of the program itself that can be typed into the calculator manually. Normally programs are a lot larger than one byte though and you'll be typing forever. Your batteries will probably die before you get done on a large program or something. But if you don't have a link cable, this is the only way to go. I'm going to delete that. There's also symbol table, which will build an include file of everything that's been included in the program. So I should be able to find the hello label right here if I search for it. So you can see it, user mem a60b hello, that's where it starts. I'm going to delete that. Alright, so I think that's about it. So that's about it for programs. Pretty simple. I'm going to close that out. That's all the bugs that I know of. Just three of them. Now I'm going to show you how to create an app. Run Assembly Studio 8X again. Go to Project, New Project, and click on TI 83 plus application. Set your project name. I'm going to call this Hello App. And then click OK. Now, app's different um, from a program because it has a header, a header file, and it also starts off at 4000. It always starts off at 4000. The header in Assembly Studio 8X, even though the OS doesn't read all the fields, the header in Assembly Studio 8X has to be 128 bytes. The app name right here always has to be 8 bytes. So you can either pad it with spaces, or you can add zeros behind it, whichever one you prefer. But just make sure that if you ever read it, it always reads out 8 bytes. Since the header is only 128 bytes long, you know that your first label or your first instruction is going to be at 4080. Just to look, the build steps for this is helloapp.sm using the hex83p.dll and that right there will work for the 84 plus C2 as long as this header is correct. Um, the 84 plus C uses the 010F key which you can see is defined right there and its version also starts with A. That's also um, correct in the program. If you ever look inside a program I don't think that I set my DLL to do it, but if you look at a real TI-84 plus C program, the version will be set to 0A most likely, while other calculators set it to 0001, the 84 plus C sets it to 0A, and in the app it sets it to A1, or A whatever version you want. Using um, let's see, using apps, one thing that I like to do is add files. The most important one being a RAM file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to new file and I'm going to type in .org string 8C, 8B8C and if I remember correctly, that should be the temp swap area. 
that's generally where I use just scrap RAM. You got 323 bytes there. And then I put a comment back there behind it so I know where it's starting at. So right here I'm going to add in hello there. And I'm going to define a byte. Then I'm going to add in that end. Keep in mind that this is only to get the locations. You could, if you really wanted to, set this as like 128 or something, but you would have to manually copy in your variable values into the temp swap area. This is basically just for getting the location of the variables themselves. So now I'm going to save this as hello app in under hello app in as a uh, ram.sm. Ram. Now I'm going to close it out. And I'm going to go to project, settings, files, and I'm going to add that file. Ram.sm. Build steps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add. And I want a symbol table. And I'm going to select ram.sm click OK and then I'm going to move it up. That way that symbol table is created before it um, builds Hello App. Now right here I can put in pounds include ram.include because whenever you build a symbol table, it builds it as a dot .include file. That way, in my app, I can go load HL with the value at hello there. And everything will be fine. So I'm going to build this. Zero, zero warnings. Go to my projects, hello app, and as you can see right here, there's the include file that it builds, which gets included into the hello app.sm file, or the build, whenever it builds it, and it builds it into a .hex file. Now, right now, I'm going to show you how to sign this application, which is very simple. It loads in the random value. Um, the temp swap area is used for archiving and un unarchiving variables, so whatever values left in there, the first two it's going to grab and put in the HL, and then it's just going to return. So basically does nothing. Oh yeah, one little thing. This Dropbox up here, you can select your files up here. And whenever you load your files, always click on the APR, the project file. That way you can, you know, select hello, hello app.sm or ram.sm. If you selected just this one, you can see that you can't go to your other file and you can't compile this single file right here. Or you can't build your single file. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to sign it. Right here is rabbitsign.zip. Should be in the links. Open it up. Drag over the executable. One thing about RabbitSign, it, at least for me, it only builds up to 16,315 bytes. I don't know why. I guess that's the limit for maybe uh, the variable that you send over to the calc. Um, but even though a an app can be up to 16,384, that will only sign up to... 16315 just so you know if it ever if you ever run it and it doesn't produce anything you know that maybe you went over your uh, size limit all right so right now to make it easy what I do is I have this batch file I'm gonna copy that put it in the hello app And I also need the 010F key. Now, I didn't put these in the links, but 
you can probably get them off of the rabbit dot bat one you can just type out by hand. The zero one zero F key you can get at either WikiTI or you can you might be able to find it in one of uh, my source for fl uh, one of my flash app sources. All right, so I'm gonna show you what rabbit dot bat's about. It's just a text file that I renamed to rabbit dot bat. There's rabbit sign minus g minus o, the output file name and the input file name. The input file name is always a dot hex. The output should be a dot hck. Um, so what I'm gonna do with this is rename it to hello app. And I'm just going to copy that to the other one. Save that. And now if I click on this, it builds my .hck file from the hex file. And that's about it for uh, creating programs and applications for the TI-84 Plus C using Assembly Studio 8X. It's the IDE that I use. Um, I don't know. I like it. It's not perfect, but it's just what I'm what I'm used to and what I've been using. And that's probably gonna be the end of this video. But I'll make a video right after this, and I'll go over the PDF files and maybe a couple of uh, programs that I already got written just so you could see how, especially like how I do the interrupts, um, I kind of take advantage of that little, the app header being, having to be 128 bytes. I'll show you how I do that. Um, yeah, so that's about it.